have been knocked out. Meanwhile, at the other end, Morocco will finish as group leaders. It's finished in Garua. It's Ghana 2, Comoros Island 3. Come forward, Sebastian Haller. This time we'll see Nicolas Pepe. It's Pepe. Can he get it? Yes, he can! It is goal number three right there for the elephants of Cote d'Ivoire. And this time, Pepe has Pepe the Algerian defense. Much more than Bolale would have ever done in that position right there, ladies and gentlemen. It's Nicolas Pepe who has Pepe Dem. Pepe, Pepe Demo. Power is what that header was from Sebastian Haller. And yes, it's lights out for the Algerians. It is an end to their dominance and the defending of their crown. Hala, if you hear the name Sebastian, because that header was a thunder. What a strike that was! He took a shot, a strike like thunder. Maduka Okoye is guilty of a blunder. Tunisia ready to put a thunder. And Nigeria Super Eagles go under. A team that got only three points from three games in the group stages have usurped the powers of the Super Eagles who got nine over nine. Mali are out of the Nations Cup. Equatorial Guinea have done the impossible. The Eagles come crashing down and the national thunder from Equatorial Guinea reverberates in Limbe after 120 minutes of football. The eighth best team on the African continent are going home and Equatorial Guinea will be going through to take on Senegal in the quarterfinals of the African Cup of Nations. In a fast on the right hand side, possession with the Stallions. Through ball to a start right hand side. Could this be the magical moment for the Stallions? He goes past two defenders, he takes a strike! He waited for his moment of magic. He was not going to be lethargic. And for Tunisia, this is tragic. Burkina Faso scored the first goal in this game. Burkina Faso have beaten Tunisia again in the quarterfinals of the AFCON by a goal to nothing this time around. They have formed, they have seen, they have conquered. And the conquerors of the Super Eagles of Nigeria, the Carthage Eagles of Tunisia, have been evicted from AFCON 2021. A Ivorian now by his steps up! And he misses! Who else to lift the glory? The Egyptian magician. Sensational Salah, they call him. Truly a man for the big occasion. Will he walk alone? Steps up! And he finishes brilliantly! Egypt! In delirium, Mo Salah lifts the pharaohs into pure, pure joy. And the pain continues to reverberate across Yamasukro and Abidjan. But trust me, Cairo lifted to the heavens. Senegal with the first goal now. Well, guess who is uh, Famara Diju? It's the man who's now put them in front. And what a finish. Yeah, they come do. Back to the action, Mohamed Salah on the right inside, approaching the penalty box, he knows how to do this, Salah with a square, Salah's assist is confirmed, it is Treza again, he's got in Egypt, he has second, and for the first time they're all up in this encounter, what a run from Mohamed Salah, he got a tap in for his, he's made it come from Treza again, it's Egypt 2, Morocco 1, and it is Sadio Mane, Sadio Mane, 1-1 one -on -one with the goalkeeper, Sadio Mane, Goal for Senegal! And that will be it! Senegal and their star man from Liverpool! Sadio Mane making no mistake on that counter! Senegal 3, Burkina Faso 1. Senegal are in the finals back to back. James Liasiliki, a 25 year old middle school player. He can make it count! Oh, it's right. safe! Hey. It's saved by Mohamed Abougabal. He did it against Cote d'Ivoire on the verge against Cameroon. But a man who will take this is Mohamed Leshin. He could put this game beyond the host nation. Leshin up against Onana. His right footed. Onana is central. Leshin scores. Bottom right corner. 
It's flawless penalty kicks from Egypt. Mm. It's going to bring Cameroon back in this. If he scores, it's game on. Everyone yeah. staring at him, GA. And GA! Oh, oh, he's missed it! Well, the referee, and eventually calls it. That's the final whistle. The indomitable Lions have been caged. Egypt have a walk in the Nubis. Victory via penalty is the Oz. There is a reason why they are the most successful team in this competition. This surely takes them closer to an eight Afghan title. A victory that elevates hope across Egypt. Envelopes another in Yaoundé. That they need Mohamed Salah's nerves of steel. Lost in the final in 2017 in Gabon against this Cameroonian side. A perfect revenge in 2021. It's a result which secures a final passage, not just the score. Alas Squares has been released. <laughs> Cameroon won, Egypt three on penalties, and from the Abyss, he comes out alive. Carlos Kairos, the Egyptian manager, red carded, certified fits to celebrate. The host nation dumped out of the competition. We've got Salah against Mane in the final. Confirmation, Egypt wins on penalties, 3-1. What a coverage has been for us, uh, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you just, uh, I know you put that together. Uh, absolutely well done. You just put together uh, the story of our African, really. It's uh, unfortunate that we don't have the final yet. Today. That would have just been the cherry on the ice, really. Yeah. But fantastic. Yeah, I don't know. What's not to love, really? From the camaraderie between the guys on duty to the football itself. I mean, I don't think anybody does Africa better than we do. Or anybody did justice to the tournament as much as we did. And I'm not just saying that because, I mean, it's us here in the studio. I'm saying that based on if I were not here and I were listening to that on my way home or somewhere else, I'll be totally proud of that. We should get a raise. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's I, I, the I most guess, important thing you have said on this show. I, I, I guess, I guess Imanda Eti should be listening yeah, to this I show. So, so please, if you don't, we are going to protest. I know the kind of protest. We'll just we'll, we'll do what kind of special protest we'll block in front the of this. Yes, we'll block the office. Yes, <laughs> but, but but Tony, you, you you had the opportunity of calling the um the Egypt versus um, Cote d'Ivoire game uh, and yeah. the penalty shootout and you lost your voice on that particular day. <laughs> what happened? It was it was it was crazy, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'd I'd been on back to back games and. It was only a matter of time before <laughs> before my voice was gonna uh, stretch. But yeah, I mean, Sam talked about it, and it, it's it's not just Nigeria. I think we have dominated Nigeria uh, by God's grace. So we're, we're I think Africa should be the conversation. I've been talking to my friends across all the African countries, and no radio station, you know, is doing it the way we're doing it. So it is special. Uh, good to know that we we are having listeners across the continent and you know even outside so uh yeah uh it's 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 hard work and um, kudos to everyone what was the elder th- uh, thinking when he said <laughs> Bala, pepe, pepe, de- you know I've that, listened, was, that was bonkers <laughs> i've listened to that commentary over and over and i'm like what was this young man thinking what came over him like how do you just go from somewhere here and you're done to <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm lost <laughs> did you just call Edda <laughs> no no no, no. I, I didn't get that part Elder, Elder, edit that part I didn't tell you I didn't tell you I think I like it um, Tony, myself all of us here we we know the hours we put back in the office getting set for a 90 minute game of football it's crazy. I mean even goes as far as the day before the night before you know you're reading up and you're catching up on the latest to give the listener the very best of uh, information and um you know you sometimes you write your script okay i'm gonna say this if mm. salah scores i'm yeah. gonna say that if, if this person scores and then you realize when the goal is scored i mean screw that script the way it comes and that's the beauty beauty of it really when you let it flow naturally that instinctive reaction to a goal or to a save or anything mm. i mean that's the that's the highlight it's best better than whatever you script so thumbs uh, up to the no, 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 you, you, you just mentioned script now 
Um, I end up sports. I hope he's not listening to what I want to say now. <laughs> that man, eh? If he wants to go, go, if he wants, if he wants to commentate on a final, it takes like a week or two. He goes to the mountain. <laughs> a week or two to prep. You will see prep, 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 prep. <laughs> red, 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 red. Every. You know, I will not be saying that. What is all this red, red? Are you marking script? That was like this man. Prep for Barcelona Bayern. <laughs> Champions League <laughs> final. <laughs> The prep that Valga prep, he did not window. use. He did not Out use. The, 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 only, the only thing we heard is it's a destruction. <laughs> uh, I can never forget that day. I'm, so now, now you saying that mo- sometimes you you script, yeah, but you just go with the flow. Certainly, it's best. It's best when you just let it flow naturally. I've, especially on the African broadcast, I I always like to you know have my intro in my head. Yeah. You know, have it a little bit of words to I like wordplay, so I like to have it down. And uh you just come out, you come in here, maybe the guy's handing over to you, say something like, Oh, I could use that, you know, and you just <laughs> let it flow naturally or it's safe. Really just comes on the moment and you find yourself Okay, I'm not going to use that. I think this goes better. This mm. plays better with this and it just flow. I, I guess that's what the Peter Drury's, the Martin Tyler's really thrive on. You know, that on-the-spot reaction. I don't think if you interview Peter or the Aguero, yeah. I don't think he ever had that down. It no. was just, that was, you know, that was off the top of his head. Yeah. He just had to do it. And that's why it's one of the famous commentaries ever made in world football. So, But one person that knows how to do long intro is Tony. <laughs> You think Tony? Tony? Tony's <laughs> intro. Think Chidi. No, it's not Chidi. No, <laughs> Chidi see, Chidi. no, Chidi own is BB Grammar. <laughs> <laughs> BB Grammar, that's Chidi's own. But Tony's intro, you will go to Yab, you will leave, you will go to Yaba from this <laughs> studio and come back. <laughs> Tony is still doing intro. <laughs> but that's why we love, we love, we love. Uh, uh, Tony know, and you know, myself you know, went, you know? to, went to, we went, went to the stadium, mm. we went to the stadium to cover Super Eagles game. Tony was doing intro. He has not even introduced me. They have scored goal. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, what kind of long intro is this commentator doing like this? No, no. I, I think that, you know, intros are, are one of the um, most sacred part of your yeah. commentaries. They, they are priceless because, you know, they set the listener on a different tempo. It is... It is. It is. You know, I'm. I'm. I'm trying to look for the words. It sets the pace. You know. Yeah. Speech. So, um, if it's for me, you know, I like my intro to be very divine. I because for me also, it gives me the right springboard, all right, to to move. And because this is a blind medium, it's not TV, all right. You are you're allowed to express yourself through your intros. Uh, before going into the game, you're painting what the listener is, is hearing and not particularly seeing. So, you know, uh, intros are a very, very strong point for me and I don't joke with them. It takes me days. <laughs> get, get ready, right? <laughs> and, 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 and even while coming to the studio, I'm saying, okay, do I change that word? Do I, okay? So it's it's a lot of creativity. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work, really. So so the intro for Final is ready now, like this. Ah. <laughs> it's not yet, though. It's not. It's not. No, no, it's not. It's not. It's not. Hopefully, the Rema would come maybe 12 midnight mm. or 1. Yeah. So you still have like what? Uh, yeah, 48 some, hours some 48 hours. Hours. You, need, you need to learn more for, from Emmanuel Etting. Emmanuel Etting preparation for final uh, is two weeks before. <laughs> two uh, weeks uh, before. Pre- pre- you, you know, for, for, for me, I mean, I was just waiting and hoping, you know, to get the finalist. I was like sitting out. So somebody should just, you know, get yeah. this thing to me so I know where I'm, where I'm headed to. <laughs> let, let me know my struggle. But yeah. Uh, fantastic but no, it, it, semi final. It's, it's going to be a great final because it should be, should because be. um, the two teams like th- that's the kind of final that I any think, commentator would I think want it would have to be a better final mm. if uh, Cameron had made it. Come really. on now, no. really now. Spectacle okay, in see. terms of the, the quality of the football, obviously, is going to be top notch, but I just think with Cameron there, it will give us a lot more something to look forward to. The I, I don't think so. Uh, Might not get a uh, yeah, I think it's just it's from the perspective of the beyond Africa. Yeah, mm. from yeah, certainly beyond be Africa. Falling, but yeah. I just think for the biggest sh- uh, showpiece on the African continent, we need a full stadium, and mm. I don't think we'll get that. Cameroons will sort of make that boring, yeah. you know, turning up, you know, for the event and maybe cheering and just, you know, I'm not taking jibes at them, but mm. just crying after still losing. Yeah, that but but but. Y- I think it goes in two ways, you know, from the perspective of a fan going to the stadium and uh, I mean, this is a final and the stadium is probably 40 percent in terms of yeah. capacity. capacity yeah. But in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the the ripple effect with the personalities like Salah, Mani, no, two of the biggest certain. players across the world. I, I'm, I'm very sure we should have 
a yeah. record a record viewership yeah. of that final you know it doesn't get bigger than salah and money in and terms of africans finest absolutely the absolutely so, and, and they're among the top if you want to talk about the top five footballers that's it, the world that's correctly, it. That's they it. are there that's, that's it they are there. so I, in the I end, think money is uh money in the ballon d'or money money was sixth or seventh yeah. you know, or thereabout behind salah yeah behind yeah it, it's good i mean if it, it, it's what we wanted for our finals the best of the <laughs> Uh, talents playing there and that's certainly what we're getting i hope your club turns out for the final if he can make it down there it will be a long way in, <laughs> you know, it's going to be crazy <laughs> yeah, i want him like to turn really crazy there's he, something he, of a little tournament there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what i was going he will be replying some sort of an apology okay guys i called it a little tournament but this is. But he said he said he was misquoted. I beg, leave club. <laughs> he said he was mis. I, mean, I, I put it for why, you I, that I, you I, all I, Africa and an apology. apology. Turn you up. The continent turn up. Africa. Turn up. <laughs> Come on, turn up and you know up. that's the best way you're gonna apologize. I mean, these are your stars. But but you know it depends. If they're in action on Sunday, it's going to be hard Maybe for him to play turn tomorrow. Up. I don't. I, I've not checked. I think they play tomorrow. Yeah, in the FA Cup. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if if they play on Saturday, is it you can easily get a private job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He's a big boy. He can. Go along but, but I think I maybe uh, part of the reason why he might not want to go down is because you have these two players. How do you console one oh. and how do you celebrate with one? It's it's a very it's a crazy place to be as a manager. Yeah, but you have to look at it from the point of winning. I, I mean, mean, they you understand have, the, you have one the, winner. The, these players understand the game. There'll always be a winner and a loser. So I don't think that'll be an issue for him. I think it'll be more special to the two players that their manager I'm sure they're already celebrating. is there. They have they're gonna have. A you must have FaceTime those two of them. No, maybe. Certainly, certainly. <laughs> they would be. Exp- if I were one of them, I'd be expecting my manager to FaceTime me. I'm like, okay, well done, mm, boys. Mm. Uh, we not lose. We yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, yeah, you, wait to yeah. Have you guys back, back and, and all of that. that. But they've been they've been showing them support on social media, by the way, putting up flyers, pictures of the two of them, saying congratulations for getting to the finals and the rest of it. But we need to go go in for a break. On the flip side, I will get to we'll be joined by someone from um, Cameroon, a multimedia journalist who's out there in Cameroon covering the tournament uh, to talk about um, how yesterday's game went down and also the guys in the studio will get to look at what went down yesterday while looking forward to the final 99.3 Nigeria Info we'll be right back
seat. of the African Cup of Nations. Uh, joining me right now, um, Blaze A. Young, a multimedia journalist from Cameroon. Um, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good evening to you. Good evening to you. And, uh, thank you for having me. Um, first off, I, I want to ask you, have you moved past yet last night's disappointment? Uh, no, it's still very difficult. I mean, for most Cameroonians, everywhere on Twitter and Facebook, even on our normal conversation, even here at the hotel, everybody's talking about the defeat. Like, we have two, uh, two, three rivals in, in Africa in terms of football. That would be Egypt, Nigeria. Really and now? Exactly. So, the, the Nigerians are... A bitter rival. You know, we've defeated Nigeria three times and taken the African Cup of Nations from them at the finals. Yeah. And also, we've had a, a very tough history with Egypt as well. In 2017, we we defeated them in the finals and we took the we brought the Nations Cup home. So it's been difficult to lose to Egypt. We prefer to lose to another team, not Nigeria, not Egypt. Okay, um, now that you've, you, you just mentioned this, let me ask you this question now. Um, did the, the players now, did they give the fans um, a reason to believe in them or the fans just believed in the players because of how, they've, how brilliant they've been all through the tournament? Uh, you, you're talking about the Cameroonian players? Yes, yes, the Cameroonian fans. Um, I think there was high hopes, you know, for the for the Cameroon national team ahead of the competition. Uh, it, it has been 50 years since Cameroon last hosted the African Cup of Nations. So this time around, the cup was coming home. The tournament was coming to Cameroon 50 years after Cameroon first hosted the tournament. Everybody was excited and the fans were really hopeful that this time around, the, the trophy would stay in Cameroon. So there was huge support. There's been huge support until yesterday. However, uh, after yesterday's defeat, uh, as you would expect, a lot of the fans, are, they are very pissed. They are so angry on social media. I will tell you something that a lot of TV networks did not, did not have an opportunity to see. When the Caribbean players were returning back to their hotel, uh, leaving the stadium yesterday, they were ac accompanied by armored vehicles from Cameroon security forces. And there was uh, a particular... Uh, 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 vehicle, uh, the water cannon. So there was a water cannon uh, in front, you know, to make sure that they, they're able to spray water to protesting fans because there were people standing off, you know, in both sides of the road, you know, protesting and some of them shooting stones. I remember uh, when uh, myself and other journalists were leaving the stadium yesterday and returning to the hotel, we have, of course, um, a, a shuttle bus that's been arranged for us by Caval, international journalists, and even journalists that are covering the tournament. Uh, some of these fans started stoning the bus. They thought it was the bus for for the players. Wow. And that tells you how uh, frustrated uh, fans are with the Cameroon national team. So there was high hopes before the tournament and even uh, during the tournament. But as of last night when Cameroon was booted out of the tournament, fans are really angry and the lack uh hope and confidence for the team and for the coach now that you've mentioned the coach he said something um after the game um he said that um he felt like his side had run out of steam playing um a sixth game in 26 days should that be an excuse for his team 
I think it's, I, in my personal opinion, I think that's, that's no excuse. Uh, and also, uh, a lot of Cameroonians also say they felt like the coach r- ran out of tactics. Like he, he did not know exactly what to do at some point in the game. He took out some key players who have been known to, to be strategic players for the game and, and brought in players who were not productive. In fact, all the, I think he brought in two or three uh, players, uh, three players, uh, if I remember uh, correctly. Uh, but these players brought no change. And these are some of the players that have been heavily criticized in, in, in the past game. So some people did not understand. And even at this point, a lot of Cameroonians did not understand why the coach took out some of these players and brought in players who have been known, of not, have been known for not being productive in the team. So he's uh, blaming the players, but of course a lot of people are blaming the coach for not uh, knowing exactly what to do in a critical game like this. Now, still talking about the team, now you've you've talked about the coach. Let's talk about the team as a whole now. Uh, because now you, you look at the team prior to that semi-final game against Egypt. You look at the caliber of teams they've played on their way to the semi-finals compared the same caliber of players that team that um the egyptian side they faced they faced morocco they faced ivory coast they also um um they came out from a group that had nigeria as well they lost their first game to nigeria and they went on to win their remaining two games both but for the cameroon national team they had it a little bit easy should i use that word um going getting to the semi-finals you want you're talking about playing a uh, comoros and also playing gambia the ma- the major test they face in the tournament personally for me i think it happens to be the game against egypt and do you think to a large extent this might be the reason why um they struggled in that game they, they couldn't get to the final knowing that that was just the real test of the tournament for the team uh, I, I I think that um, also we we from the experience we've, we've seen from uh, uh, this Nations Cup uh, because the teams you have mentioned each, uh, uh, Nigeria Ivory Coast and, and the rest uh, these are the so called big teams. However, we've also we can also agree that uh, the so called small teams like the Gambia, Equatorial Guinea, um, Sierra Leone have created a lot of trouble for the so-called big team so I, I do not totally agree that they've had it they had it easy because um you remember that uh gambia humiliated uh tunisia at some point uh so we've seen some of these so-called small teams you know fight really hard and and they gave the big boys a run for their money um but of course, I, I think yesterday's game, Egypt against Cameroon, was the real test for Ca- for the Cameroon national team. But it also for any team, you know, uh, Egypt is a, is a great side. And a lot of people consider yesterday's game as the finals before the finals. Um, again, these are teams, these are great rivals for in African football. These are the two most celebrated uh, African countries um, in terms of football, Egypt has won um, seven trophies and Cameroon has won five. No other nation has come close uh, to that. So you would expect that this game will be a fire game. And I actually did not expect that there will be a goal in the first 90 minutes, just really? like it was. So so I, I think, yes, it was a real test for the Cameroon national team. But we can't really say they've had it easy because some of the small, so-called small teams like the Gambia have you know they've really shown that they, they they can play good football yeah part of the reason why i said that they seem to, they've had it easy you you just mentioned that the, the small teams they've caused trouble for big teams and and the rest of it but when you place the likes of comoros and gambia on on the same pedestal like you want to talk about afcon experience they mm-hmm. don't they don't have the kind of afcon experience that the egyptian side they've got so going into that game yesterday it was a case of this is the real deal if we can get past this side then we'll be in the final whatever happened in the finals we just hope that it goes our way but let's just do our best and get to the finals but um, something struck me after that game talking about the captain of the side uh coming out to talk mention some things about the team saying that they did not play as a team that uh, everyone wanted to be the star of the team um do you think um that was overboard from the captain 
I think he spoke the truth, but I think he shouldn't have said the truth. Okay. Where he did. I think he he spoke the truth. I'm sure you watched the game yesterday, and I'm sure you've watched the the other game, Cameron Gambia, and the other games. You realize that even from the the first game, the opening match, Cameron against Burkina Faso, it was a tough game, but the team was together. You saw really nice passing, great attacking, great defending, and stuff. However, we didn't see much of that yesterday. So I think he spoke the truth. If we're going to be objective, I think he spoke the truth that everybody was just trying to be a star yesterday. Everybody just wanted to be a star. Everybody was just doing their own thing. That's what he said. However, as a team leader, even not a team leader, just even even if he was just a player and he was he wasn't the captain, you cannot say that in public because that is obviously going to create some kind of rift between you and your teammates and and it's going to create tension in the calm you know cameroon just like nigeria ghana and other countries are also preparing for uh the players for the qatar world Cup. Yeah. so obviously the team needs to be together so he spoke the truth uh but he shouldn't have have said it uh where he said it. he shouldn't have said it in front of reporters it should have, it should have been off records i mean these are things they can discuss in the local room not in the not in the public in so, my, that's that's my opinion about it okay off the mic um earlier on during the show my colleague and we we're having a conversation about um the uh, one of my colleague mentioned that he would have loved to see cameroon in the finals because it's going to ensure that a lot of the fans turn out um give like the stadium feel and the rest knowing that the home team is playing in the final and the rest of it and he had his reservations as uh, saying that um it's possible that we might not have a massive turnout simply because cameroon will not be playing in the final that's that's so true. Uh, last night, when when we left the, the stadium, I was heading to downtown Yaoundé because I wanted to do a piece to camera uh, at the central town. So that's the central town is all, also where a lot of fans can. That's that's like a, a a bus stop. They stop there and then take another taxi or something else to go to their homes or the various neighborhoods. So while I was doing uh, the piece to camera, a lot of fans came in. They wanted to speak, they wanted to be interviewed. Uh, some just spoke randomly and they were very pissed. They were very pissed with the national team. They were very pissed with how the players played. And most of them said that they, they invested a lot of money to buy expensive uh, uh, football kids, to buy Vuvuzela and other gadgets to pay tickets to go see the, the games. Some of them also, you know, also the issue of vaccines. Um, Cameroon, just like most African countries, if not all African countries, most people have been hesitant to, in, in, to take vaccines. However, because uh, getting access to the stadium was one of the requirements put in place by CAV, a lot of people, Cameroonians who wanted to see the games, uh, took the vaccine. So people went to extreme and people who never believed in vaccines, people who spoke badly about vaccines, took the COVID vaccine just because they want to access the stadium, they want to support the teams, especially the Cameroon national team. However, uh, like you pointed out, I think that the stadium will be empty. Cameroon has another game tomorrow. They are battling against uh, Burkina Faso yeah. to gain the third position. I think the stadium is going to be empty. I think we're going to see an almost empty stadium because a lot of Cameroonians are so disappointed if you look through social media, it's you would not believe what Cameroonians are saying about the national team, uh, and also even on the street. So I think the stadium, the stadiums are going to be empty. Um, I think also the stadium is going to be empty on Sunday when we are going to have the the finals because a lot of people are disappointed. Um, I think the the problem here is that a lot of Cameroonians believed even before this tournament began that the, the Cameroon national team was going to play in, uh, going to play the finals and they're going to win the cup but they believe at least that the national team was going to go up to the finals so now it's, it's a bit complicated i think a lot, a lot of fans will not go through the the you know all the the struggles the and yeah like, uh, you know yeah exactly to get vaccinated uh you need to have a pcr test so for example people who need who want to watch the game on sunday will need to go tomorrow stand in a queue to have a pcr test tomorrow in order for them to access the stadium on, on Sunday. 
except diehard football fans, it will be difficult to see a lot of people on Sunday. Um, I've got my colleagues with me in the studio, Samuel and um, The Voice. Uh, Samuel has got a question for you. Yeah, good evening to you and uh, thank you very much for joining us on the broadcast. Uh, very quickly, uh, you've spoken about the reaction to yesterday's defeat from a Cameroonian perspective. And I guess uh, that's only an emotional one for 24 hours later. But uh, what do you think maybe uh, when the tournament ends, uh, a bit of post-mortem or you know, good looking back at the tournament, will it be called a successful tournament for Cameroon's national team? I mean, not so many teams got to the uh, semi-finals. The likes of Nigeria have, you know, been knocked out. Algeria defending champions. So, would Cameroonians look back a couple of days later and say, uh, "Hold on, guys, this has been a successful tournament for Cameroon." And if it is regarded as that, looking forward for Cameroonian football, especially ahead of the World Cup qualifiers. I mean, what are the positives that Cameroon can use? you know, to take to the future in terms of their football? Um, Cameroon, like Nigeria, like Egypt, like um, Senegal, the Ivory Coast, are countries that are extremely passionate about football and Cameroonians are crazy about football. Uh, I've, I've, seen, I've had the opportunity to speak to uh, some journalists from Nigeria, from Ghana, from South Africa that have been here covering the African Nations Cup and they, they've told me that they have not seen anything like this across the continent, how much Cameroonians, you know, care about football. So I think um, Cameroonians will be happy that at the end of the day, some stadiums, new infrastructures were, were built because of the African Nations Cup. But in terms of the team, because you mentioned the team, yeah. for Cameroonian, this wasn't good enough. The semi-finals wow. wasn't good enough. I mean, this is from from the point of view of everybody. You know, this wasn't good enough. If you hear the Cameroon captain, Versang Abubakar, speaking yesterday, uh, like what your colleague asked earlier, yeah. that's because... He is frustrated. This is what he said. He says, I, I, I can't, I can't, I will just paraphrase. He said that it's bizarre that Cameroon hosted the African Cup of Nations and Cameroon has been kicked out. Cameroon is not going to the finals. So he's a player. He understands that sometimes you can win, sometimes you can lose. But even as a player, an experienced player, he plays, you know, he plays in a, in a, in a great club. He was part of the, the the team that won the 2017 African Cup of Nations. See how frustrated he is that Cameron did not get to the finals. And then just imagine fans who do not have a clue much about football and they do not even understand the principle of fair play and that today you may win and tomorrow you lose. Yeah. So from the point of view of Cameroonians, they're extremely disappointed and and they do not they wouldn't I think they wouldn't consider this Nations Cup as a success when talking about the national team. They would say it's a success because Cameroon was able to bring 24 African teams to their country. Cameroon was able to build one of the newest stadiums in Africa, one of the uh, 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 you know biggest, greatest, nice-looking stadiums in the continent at the moment. But if it comes to the performance of the national team, most people say uh, the performance of the individual the national, the national football team here is called wasn't good enough. And talking about the, the World Cup, I just saw a video just before we came on air of Samuel Eto, Cameroon's um, FA. Football, football Federation's president, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, a former, former football legend. He was telling the players in the local room after the game yesterday that they need to channel their energy to the Qatar World Cup. So they need to make sure that they qualify for the World Cup and go to the World Cup. That's the way they can use to redeem themselves. I mean, it's, it's important. You know, it's, it's extremely important. If Cameroon had gone to the finals and, uh, you know, there will be some, they will have some opportunity to say, okay, maybe we go to the World Cup, maybe we don't go to the World Cup. But now there's a lot of pressure from from the FA, from, from the local uh, fans, I, I would guess from the government, that they, they qualify for the World Cup. So I think it, it's it's going to be more pressure for the team now. All right, thank you very much for joining us on the show tonight. It's been great talking to you, uh, my very good friend, uh, Blaze A. Young, uh, all the way from Cameroon. Hope I didn't murder that name, though. <laughs> you, did, you, did, you, did, you did so well. All right. Um, thank you very much, and good luck. Hoping you guys qualify for Qatar.
uh, 99.3 Nigeria Info. We need to go in for a break as it stands. On the flip side, we'll get to look at um, the finals, um, look at the games that will be going down, talking about uh, the AFCON final, um, breaking down different parts of that game for you.